In this third and last part of a three-part Django REST framework series, we're going to again look at our views and then we're also going to introduce view sets and routers to slim up your code even more so that you can more quickly create your APIs with your basic CRUD operations of your models. This does not diminish the flexibility of Django REST framework, but allows you to get more code done faster. The first thing that we're going to do in our views file is we're going to remove our generic imports and then we're going to import our view sets. After that we're going to actually delete our views and instantiate a new task view set class and then we're going to inherit from our mixin which keeps our same functionality from our custom pre-save, our permissions and serializers so it's going to be the exact same. Then we're going to inherit a view sets dot model view set which gives us a bunch of basic functionality. So all that we've really done is we've removed our two existing views and instead replaced them with a task view set that essentially incorporates everything that the previous two views did in one view set. And now it's up to us to actually start mapping the proper HTTP verbs to our view set functions. To do that, we're going to create a task list and then we're going to run a call our task view set with the as views, similar to what we do with generic class based views. And then we're going to pass it a dictionary of the HTTP verb and the, or the method that we wanted to call. In this case, we're going to use get and we're going to say, hey, we want to call the list method. Post will do post. And we'll also do the same thing again, except for we'll do it with all of our task details, doing the get, put, patch, and delete. And we're going to attach those to the proper methods as well. We only really have one final thing to do for this part. And that is we're going to go into our URLs. We're going to import our task list and task detail. And then we're going to remove the class based view declarations and replace with task list and task detail. So now that we jump into doing our demo, if we do a normal curl, we get nothing. We can do we can go ahead and post in data and then we use our username and password like normal and we get data back. So that shows that that's working. And then we pull it out again and everything's fine. Now we're going to move on to our router. We're going to go back into our views and we're going to import our default router from Django REST framework. Then we're going to follow that up by deleting all the URL stuff that we just did. And we're going to instantiate a new instance of the default router. Then we're going to follow that up by registering a new set of URLs. And we're going to use tasks as our in our regular expression to begin with. And we're going to pass it our task view set. Essentially at this point what we're doing is we're saying, hey, we're going to register a new set of views that need to be associated with the prefix of tasks in our URL. And then what we're going to do is we're next going to jump into our URLs file, except we're not going to do the URLs of our API. We're actually going to go up to our main URLs and, re and replace our include API.URLs with our task router instead. And we're going to call URLs from that. And so what that's actually going to do is with our default router that we instantiated, in, it's going to take everything that we registered as URLs and it's going to build out the URL patterns as if we had written them manually. So in our instance, we're going to take the tasks and it's going to put it after API just like normal. And then it's going, the code is going to take care of the rest of our associations from our view sets. You can do a lot of modification to view sets, just register a bunch of them with one router, or you can write custom routers that'll associate just fine with other view sets. This allows you to do this simple include at one level, and then the rest is taken care of in code instead of having to define a whole bunch of URLs by hand. You just register new, new view sets with a prefix that you want to go into the URL. So to show all that this is working, Let's actually do another pool of data. So we're, we'll do another curl to get our data from our API tasks. And then we're going to also do a delete using our username and password. And then try to pull again and all of our data is gone. And that's it. That is this three part series on Django REST framework. I've taken you from using function based views and very basic instances of doing serialization with data into doing a little more with your serialization and going over to class-based views and then we also looked at doing custom permissions and then view sets and routers. 
I may feel like we've only covered one sliver of what goes on with Django REST framework, but we've actually covered a wide range of things that Django REST framework does, and this really sets you up to go far and really expand into everything that Django REST framework has to offer. This is a good base of knowledge these last three episodes. I encourage you to definitely take a look and continue looking at Django REST framework. It's a great library to use uh, to create your APIs and I will continue to do videos in the future on Django REST framework but I just wanted to get a base of knowledge done and out of the way. I hope you've enjoyed this series. Please visit back and watch more later.